Call to order the Farragut Board of Zoning Appeals for Wednesday, April 25, 2018. I have three items on the agenda this evening. And the first item is the approval of minutes for January 24, 2018. Have all of our members had an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. yes. Wait a minute. What's going on? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I abstain. Oh, you weren't here. Yeah. And uh, uh, hmm. I don't know what's going on. I can't forward this thing. Scott Meyer will be at. He doesn't like me. I think this program really has something personally against me. I don't know what it is. All right, I'm going to have to do that because we, we got to have these for the meeting. But I sure. Don't know why it's not? We need to take a break to get that running. Might have to. I'll go ahead and read what's on the agenda. Two other items. Uh, the second item is a public hearing on a request for a special exception to expand a non-conforming structure parking lot as provided for in Chapter 4, uh, Section 17A2 of the Farragut Zoning Ordinance associated with the redevelopment of a portion of Station West Development, 11311 Station West Drive, 2.51 acres, Zone C2. I have no idea what it's doing. It won't, it won't go to the next page. Even that? No. Locked up. I have no idea. You will swear in whoever speaks. I will, but I'd swear Mark in too. I'll just give him a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it is. All right. Thank you. Oh, right, you you taking action on the minutes? Yes, we have okay. voted. You already have voted on the minutes. We did. Okay, sorry. What was the vote? We approved them. <laughs> we thought they were good. Motion and second. I seconded. Motion. Second, abstained over here, and uh, reference that we have one one member absent. All right, no problem. And the next item I just read into the record. Uh, do we have the applicant, uh, Mr. Is it Pfizer? We're representing. Okay. All right. Um, are you ready to proceed on that? Uh, all who are going to testify or give testimony, if you please raise uh, your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. All right, and when you speak, I will ask that you take the podium uh, and that you identify yourself and identify your full name and where you live. Uh, but uh, the first we'll hear from the town. Mr. Shipley? Well, the net, both of these items obviously are interrelated so we'll, uh, on the special exception, uh, Station West, uh, if you haven't already been out there, I'm sure you all have been by it hundreds of times. Um, it's currently two freestanding buildings that are very narrowly separated by a real thin kind of alley, um, for lack of a better way to phrase it. It was uh, built in uh, 1988, and really the whole development predates any current requirements it doesn't meet anything for the most part um, um, so what the applicant is looking to do at this point is to demolish the western building the one that's closest to King's uh, Campbell Station Road uh, it's it's about 18,000 square feet uh, and their proposal is to build a new building uh, in that area that'll be about 12,000 square feet with a drive-through um, around on the um, side of the building and that's what's proposed um, for this particular western portion of Station West at this time. Um, the existing building actually does meet setbacks um, in the uh, C2 zoning district uh, and then of course the proposed building it, by it being even a little bit smaller would be even further away from property lines um, and um, like I said the site itself, um, though the building meets setbacks, the, the rest of the site is non-compliant in a number of ways. Uh, the parking lot is pretty much right at the property line. Uh, the required setback for a new development would be 20 feet uh, from front property lines uh, and 10 feet from side and rear property <coughs> lines. Um, 
it's non-conforming in terms of lot coverage. It's way over 70 percent. It's all. It's almost 95 percent at this point. Um, doesn't meet any landscaping requirements. The current building has zero landscaping between the building and the parking lot, um, and um, it uh, doesn't meet, you know, anything internal to the parking lot. It doesn't have the island requirements and access ways that we would require for a new development. Um, and then, as we'll talk about with the next item, which is related to the first item, they don't have any pedestrian facilities on any of the frontage of the property. The property actually fronts on three public streets, Campbell Station Road, which there is a sidewalk there that was constructed by TDOT a number of years ago, and then Station West Drive to the south, and then Campbell Lakes Drive to the north. Um, so that's kind of the current condition that's, that's out there in place. Um, obviously, the replacement building um, would bring the building uh, much greater into compliance than what's out there right now, and it would also be a s extreme visual enhancement <laughs> to what's what's out there. Um, the uh, then the work that they're doing within, particularly the western two thirds of the parking lot, uh, is bringing the parking lot more into compliance than what. Uh, is out there as well. They're narrowing the access off of Station West Drive. It's currently over 50 feet. They're t bringing that down to 25 feet. Um, they're adding some parking lot islands uh, in landscaped islands in the parking lot, defining that parking area um, in the north part of the development, um, which is kind of a free-for-all right now. It's not even really defined if you've been out there. Um, but this, if I can get it to come up here, of course it's not working now, but I really think that program has something against me. But anyway, it's in the upper part there. That is existing. There's no, it's just kind of a free for all basically. So they're trying to, without completely redeveloping the site, which would be a substantial amount of grading because it's elevated significantly above Campbell Station Road. I mean, it would be a real, undertaking to completely redevelop it and bring everything into compliance. Um, so uh, really this is kind of <coughs> more of a perpetuation of a non-conforming structure, the structure being the parking lot essentially. Um, the, uh, uh, and that's really why it's being brought to, to you all for consideration as a special exception. Because they are taking an existing building and completely demolishing it, you know, you can kind of make an argument that there is an expansion to a non-conforming or a perpetuation to a non-conforming condition. Um, and, you know, the, the value of bringing that before the Board of Zoning Appeals is that you all can review the special exception um, and establish certain conditions on uh, the development or the approval that the Planning Commission as part of the site plan uh, review could not do. Uh, this was reviewed by the Planning Commission last Thursday. They did conditionally approve uh, the site plan. Uh, one of the conditions obviously was on the action to be taken by the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, which could result in the site plan being reconsidered by the Planning Commission. Um, but from a staff's perspective, as far as the special exception to um, address this non-conforming uh, site, um, if you looked in the zoning ordinance at the language for consideration of uh, approval of special exceptions, you know, it talks about having enough physical space and uh, not uh, compounding the condition of non-conformity. Uh, if you look at what they're proposing in relation to that language, they're physically reducing the space that's non-compliant. So they're actually bringing the physical space more into compliance. Um, there is room to do that because they're actually shrinking uh, the non-conformity. 
so, you know, I think based on the applicant's proposal that was conditionally approved by the Planning Commission, um, we feel comfortable supporting the special exception because of the different things that they're doing on the property itself uh, and the building to bring it more into compliance without, you know, completely redeveloping the entire property. Uh, so that's kind of an overview of, of what they are requesting. And if you have any specific questions on the site plan or, or anything like that, uh, they have some representatives here that could probably answer that. Mr. Shipley, tell me what the town's position is with regard to the difference between a special exception and a variance. Well, I mean, it's the special exception. If you look in the in the zoning ordinance, it talks about a non-conforming um, building and use and structures. This is kind of a non-conforming structure. Um, and that's something that if somebody is continuing that or expanding it or rebuilding it, uh, those are things that in the zoning ordinance are considered under a special exception um, because it is, like I say, a non-conforming structure. Although it's not a non-conforming building or a use, it's, it's a compliant use and building, but it's not a compliant structure or site that surrounds the building. And that's something that has to be addressed um, through a special exception um, consideration, you know, of a non-conforming condition. Traditionally, my memory is that it is easier to find a special exception for a non-conforming building or structure than it is to find a variance to be warranted just because of the fact that you already have a non-conforming yeah. structure and yeah. the the decision really is whether or not it's compounding the problem or exacerbating the problem yes yeah all right certainly if they were expanding it obviously we would not be supporting that but since they are contracting it and in the staff's opinion trying to do things in the parking lot to significantly bring it more into compliance um, that's why we feel that, you know, the special exception for what they're doing at this time is is warranted. And to be clear, we're on um, item on the agenda number two, which has to do with the special exception and does not have to do with the walkway at this point. All right. Yeah. So, so it, it is related. It's part of the non-conforming condition of of the site, the fact that they don't have pedestrian facilities. That's sure. just a separate requirement in the zoning ordinance uh, as to why it's being addressed separately. Okay. Also, uh, we're not changing the use as far as uh, it's no. going to be shops. In other words, right. not changing from one That's right. uh, major use to another. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a restaurant, though. Is that right? Well, it's a mix of uses. It, it'll have, it'll, I think, uh, You'll have some retail. It does have a restaurant. It may, could have office. The same uses, mix of uses that, you know, have been in there or are there. Um, so it's, you know, it's not like Ron said, it's not, they're not changing the uses from something that is not a permitted use. It's, uh, yeah, that's not really an issue. Example being, uh, it's not, we're not changing it from a service station to a hospital or something. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. In general, would it be fair to say that not only is it desirable to have a non-conforming structure become more conforming over time, but uh, it's preferable to make any improvement to the property you can to make it more conforming. So it it really is a benefit to bring it more in yeah. compliance. It is in our in our land use plan, which governs our ordinances, you know, talks about redeveloping these aging shopping centers and, you know, trying to um, to look at ways to encourage that rather than discourage it. Um, so 
if you have somebody that's coming before you and trying to take an aging shopping center and and make a substantial improvement to it, though it's still non-compliant in certain aspects, um, that's, that is something that would be, in the staff's opinion, consistent with our land use plan. Does anyone else have any questions of Mr. Shipley before we let the applicant? I do. Um, so I'm a little confused in, in the information provided by the town you you state that this really isn't an expansion of a non-conforming structure but more of a continuance or a perpetuation of so in reviewing exhibit d which is the section that discusses non-conforming buildings and uses <coughs> there there's two areas in there that we could consider i guess one would be uh, a non-conforming building operationally that has been vacant for more than 365 days would re require a special exception for occupancy under the current that current zoning um, code. And then the other is expansion permitted as a special exception. And so my question is, well, two, two questions really. Did the planning commission require as part of their process a special exception for expansion of non-conforming use no okay no normally actually that it would go, come before you all before it goes to the planning commission and then the second question is i i don't see expansion here i see contraction yes. of non-conforming use i agree so i question whether this is even an issue that needs to be brought before this board and whether we have the authority to act on this as there is no expansion, the building is is currently occupied, so we can't, you know, look at the operations under uh, paragraph A of that section. I don't see that the town has anywhere in the ordinance that requires a special exception to decrease nonconforming use on. Yeah, on this we property. talked about that internally, me and the other planner about. It, it is a contraction, you're right, mm -hmm. but they are taking a 18,000 square foot building and demolishing it completely and putting them back a 12,000 square foot building. So it's, it's a pretty significant, um, you know, redevelopment and we felt it might be more cleaner if something like that, just because of what you could have on other, in other areas of the town, um, that we had something that was presented at a public meeting uh, where you all were considering a specific applicant's request um, and, you know, reviewing it as to whether, yes, it is a contraction, but it is a continuation of a non-conforming condition, a very non-conforming condition. Um, and we felt like that needed to be something that, and you can, you can make the um, the vote something that you all, you know, it's not something you can govern, and that, that was fine. We thought it was just cleaner to present it to you all for consideration because it is a pretty substantial redevelopment, you know, without bringing the entire site into compliance. Um, so. That's why there are certain elements of it that were, um, you know, kind of, to me, kind of a perpetuation of, of a very non-compliant -com condition. Let, um, let me follow up on that, because that is an interesting point. If I'm reading uh, the request correctly, the non-conforming structure, and it's written in parentheticals, is a parking lot. So yes. what is contracting is the building. So absolutely correct that that's not right. Expanding. And the parking lot's contracting. So the parking yes. lot also, even though we're losing building, the parking lot square footage is not getting any bigger. No, it's contracting as well. Okay. That's right. Yes. Because so of the uh, islands and yes. uh, greenery. The access from Station West is contracting. Okay. Yeah, we struggle with that. We just felt like this could be something that comes up in the future, and we need to have a, you know, an approach to how to deal with this. If it's something you all feel that 
in this type of context is, is not in your venue, um, you know, and your something you can render a decision on or it's not an appropriate matter, then that's guidance that I think is useful for the staff in the future. And I, I only bring these questions up because my concern for the board is, is that we don't <coughs> overstep our bounds and our authorities as, as a board uh, and render a decision on something that, as I read the ordinance, I don't, I don't see any expansion here. <laughs> and that's where I think if I was looking, um, and you brought up the, the great point, is if the park, I figured the parking lot was going to expand to some extent because the building was getting smaller and you're going to, looks like you're adding more parking. But if that's not the case, then, then I don't see how this is an expansion of a non-conforming use. There's certain areas where that are not parking now that are becoming parking. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a reconfiguration, but overall there's fewer parking spaces and fewer asphalt. There's about 6% less lot coverage with what they're proposing in relation to what they have. So we couldn't in good faith say that there's any structure that's expanding with this proposed redevelopment? No, there's not to my knowledge based on my review of the, the plan, right? Now, if for some reason the board found that we didn't have authority because there was nothing expanding, yep. uh, is there anything that ties down our decision to the exact blueprints we have today. I mean, theoretically, something could change down the road that would be an expansion, and we would have no idea of knowing that because our decision is based entirely on these plans. So I suppose we could make whatever decision we make completely relying upon the plans as yes, submitted you could. in the proposal, which is as appropriate. approved by the planning commission do. or something like that, yes. Okay. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you raised a point that we raised internally. I mean, it's a very good point. We just felt like it, with the scale of the redevelopment, it was cleaner to go ahead and present it for consideration as to and maybe give us some guidance as to, you know, how we might treat these matters in the future. I guess a follow-up to that then is if this board took no action because we saw no authority here, Okay. Is there is there a negative repercussion to the development of the site, or is the the planning commission <coughs> accepting of this site plan? Uh, you know, we obviously have to address, address the next item on the agenda. But if this board takes no action, does that cause this to go back to the planning commission for more discussion, or is it still going no. to remain? Mm -hmm. No, they approved it basically as laid out with potentially some modifications to the pedestrian facilities and things like that but which is next uh, yeah. yes okay but uh, otherwise it you would not have to go back to the planning okay. commission well, I think what we probably need to do is look and see what's next and see if any of it is uh, counterproductive to, to set precedence okay yeah okay. are you proposing we look at the next item on the agenda yes first yes I think we could do that. All. Yeah. yeah. First, I'd like to see, does we're, before we go to the next item, does the applicant have anything that they would like to tell us uh, at this point with regard to number two? Because what we're proposing to do is move on and discuss number three so that we have both items in context. And if you would, please, if you would please state your name and where you live. Annette Hummel, 233 Gwynwood Lane, Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, I really don't have anything to add. I think Mike Mark pretty much covered it, and, and through the discussion, I think um, that, that everything um, you know we wanted to convey, you all have talked about. I just want to kind of reiterate that you know we are adding landscape islands within the parking lot per the current zoning ordinance, and then of course the landscaping around the building will be also per the zoning ordinance. So I feel like we've done what we can with the site, um, and I, you know, I can answer any questions if you have any. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, <coughs> I'm sure the Planning Commission uh, addressed this drive through on, on this, on the restaurant site. 
Is there, is there anything about that that's out of? No. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, like I say, the site plan in general, there's some modifications that, you know, were one of the subject to's with mainly okay. in relation to pedestrian facilities. But other than that, they were generally okay with it. All right, with no further questions, then the board is reserving ruling on item two and moving on to item three to hear both in context. Item three, I'll read into the record, is a public hearing on a request for a variance from chapter four, uh, section 22A and B, to not construct pedestrian facilities on all abutting streets, resulting in a site plan review associated with the redevelopment of a portion of Station West Development, 11311 Station West Drive, 2.51 acres, zone C2. Uh, David Pfizer, applicant again. So, Mr. Shipley, tell us the town's position on that one, please. Well, this is a separate section in the zoning ordinance where, as part of a site plan review, just like the Planning Commission was required to, to do last Thursday with the with this project, um, there's a requirement in there that you have to provide pedestrian facilities along all abutting streets. As I mentioned earlier, there's three streets that this property abuts. One street already has a pedestrian facility, but there aren't any on Station West and Campbell Lakes Drive. Um, so uh, the applicant has, and uh, they, they may have an update on this um, per some recommendations from the staff, but uh, just let's just deal with Station West first, but that's the requirement from the zoning ordinance that's on the screen there. Um, Station West Drive on the south part uh, of the property um, actually was originally constructed just as a cul-de-sac. It's just, uh, you can see the cul-de-sac bulb there. Mm -hmm. um, and then when Hampton Inn was developed, um, the town had got them to tie in to the cul-de-sac just so you have um, different ways to get in and out of property. And for point of reference, that's the building with the swimming pool above? Yeah, that's the, the Hampton Inn. Of that? Yes, or that's right. That gives connectivity. Yep, to have it a lot of um, different ways to get in and out there. They can go out to Campbell Lakes Drive to the north or down to the uh, access easement that takes you down to Parkside Drive to the south and then Station West to the west. Um, so the, the street is, it, it was constructed to a local street standard, which is a 26-foot wide street other than the cul-de-sac, of course. Um, and then, you know, you don't really have, um, one of the reasons why we have 26 foot wide streets in residential areas is because there's the potential for on street parking and it gives you enough space to park and people to get around. But in the case of this street, you know, you have off site, off street parking um, adjacent to the street. So you shouldn't ever have a situation where somebody is parking on the street. Um, so what we were trying to do is to figure out um, with the applicant a way to get a kind of a, a pedestrian facility in a kind of creative way <laughs> from the cul-de-sac or at least across the Station West frontage on Station West Drive um, down to Campbell Station Road sidewalk. Um, if, you, if you look, if you go out to the property, um, let me see if I've got, that's a view of uh, looking west from Hampton Inn, essentially. Uh, you see the, the cul-de-sac bulb and then station west development on the right side of um, the image there. So what we're trying to do is, it, there is a lot of value in having a pedestrian facility to get to these these places interconnected unfortunately they didn't think about it at the time many years ago um, but we have pedestrian facilities in the hampton inn project both along campbell lakes drive uh, and you know other portions of the site so um, we were trying to figure out a way without a substantial redevelopment of getting a, a safe pedestrian facility from Hampton Inn essentially down to the Station West development. Um, so initially we <coughs> talked with the applicant about um, one of the issues out there is there's some large trees between the back of the curb 
and um, you know the station west parking lot and then there's also a water line and a bunch of water meters in that general area as well um, and y yes you could go in and just regrade all of that and put in a pedestrian facility but what we were trying to look at and we've been doing this with the planning commission lately um, is think about how roads are used and do you really need 26 feet of pavement out there um, where you've got a, a street that you're not going to have on street parking um, and it's really fairly low traffic generation um, so what our suggestion was was to and we talked with the town engineer about this was maybe just to narrow the width of the street from the north side and bring that curb line in four feet make the street 22 feet instead of 26 feet wide and then put the pedestrian facility in behind that <coughs> new curb line the five foot facility and that would be a little bit safer um, environment than kind of we talked to them about maybe just restriping within the existing uh, traveled way uh, but I think the staff's preference would be to try to reconstruct that extruded curb and move the street inward and put the facility behind that on Station West Drive. Um, so I don't know if y'all want to talk about Station West first or go on to Campbell Lakes Drive or... I think Station West is a good start because there's actually something that can be done there, so... And this is looking at... This is um, from the... Um, Eastern access into Station West looking west toward Campbell Station Road and you can see what you'd be getting into uh, there's some maple trees there on the right um, so if you could move that curb line in it, first of all it'd make for a more attractive looking street because that extruded curb is obviously pretty dated <laughs> um, and then you know you, you would probably be able to save those trees and not have an impact to the water line uh, that's in the general area as well. Help, help me understand, though, Mr. Shipley, how the board could make a decision that incorporates action by the town. Because what you're saying is a, one proposal could be that the town take back some of the street so that there's additional area to build the sidewalk and then that the applicant be required to build the sidewalk in an area well the applicant would would be narrowing the street with the town's approval of the site plan okay and then putting in the facility in behind the curb the new curb line but so that'd this, be part of the site plan all right but at this point we don't have the town's permission to do that so i'm trying to think through if we were to make a decision we said that's great that's let's do that what do what would we say that they subject to the town's approval to uh, narrow the street? Yeah, I would say yeah. Allow them to to yeah. Okay, yes. and, and that if, would be reflected on the site plan that right. gets approved for the development. And that if the town chooses not to do that, would they have to come back before us? Well, if that's part of your your action, then they would. Yeah, okay. potentially have to yeah, come back. Protection, yeah. All right. All right. Sorry. I just, yep. I'm trying to think through it. Yeah, as it's going. A, yeah, it's a little bit interesting situation where. <laughs> okay. But basically that would, that would get a walkway that runs along Station West. Their frontage of it, yes. Their frontage of it and really takes you up to the cul-de-sac, but they can't go beyond the right. uh, yeah the next lot but at that point it's pretty obviously wide yep. in there much wider than the rest of the street there is a small section that is uh might, we'll have to deal with that a little bit but uh figure out how we transition that but uh and what what is the building uh to the looks like it's the northeast of the east building what is the what is on the lot next door? You know, I forgot to look. Uh, it looks yes. like a, it's a uh, medical um, dental. It's a no. It's a dialysis. Yeah, it's a oh, dialysis. dialysis. It's a dialysis yeah. clinic, I do believe. All right, I think that's right. Last I heard, I've got a question about. Let's start from the uh, the Campbell uh, North Campbell Station Road corner. 
Okay, I, I'm looking at uh, what looks like a tie-in to the sidewalk. Will, will, the, will the extruded curb be redone on that corner as well to, to, to pick up the sidewalk? I'm not from sure yet. Maybe Annette can. This, well, this is one of the things that I'm not sure where they're at with I mean, regards yeah. to this. It ends right here. Oh, sure. So how would you tie it in, right? Yeah. Right, yes, right now we're looking at tying the, uh, redoing the ramp on the corner. ADA. And, and so um, um, we'd be doing it basically from the corner around just the ramp area. We'd have the, the curb redone. So the curb, you're telling me that the sidewalk that faces North Campbell Station Road is going to dump out right there? And then you're going to you're going to have a a, 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 a I guess an ADA compliant uh, corner. Yes. And then you're going to pick you're going to at that point construct the curb. Well. And go up Campbell or go up Station West. The the original plan we showed, we were able to get a compliant ADA compliant sidewalk from Campbell Station up to the first driveway entrance with the six foot grass strip. Okay. Um, we'd be losing one of those large maple trees. Uh, I think one of the trees is dead and the other one's rather disfigured. Um, we still have the water line problem there, but we could probably work that out. So we were able to do that there. And I guess the question is, do we do the, the section of sidewalk to the first driveway entrance from Campbell Station, like I have it shown with the six foot wide grass strip, and then between the other two entrances, do what Mark was talking about. And I've talked to Daryl about this, and he's okay with doing it either way, narrowing the whole street all the way to Campbell Lakes or Campbell Station, or, you know, doing part of it narrowed and part of it leaving part of it the way it is. See, it would work either way. I mean, it. <coughs> well, I'm, I'm looking at it from a, uh, a person that would drive onto that street to, uh, uh, they're going to have one thing when they first turn on, and then they'll have something else as they as they go back through there. Well, that would be that would be for the people coming from Campbell Station up Station West. It wouldn't affect them at all. Okay. But the people coming Thank down, you. it would kind of be in the direction of travel where you'd have the bump out because you're coming right off the cul-de-sac. It's getting a little wider, and then it's or narrowing, and then it's getting wider as it gets towards the intersection okay. of Campbell Station. Got it. I got it now. Yeah. It's kind of like a, you know, kind of like a traffic calming element yeah. there in a way because you've got a street section that's more narrow and then it widens out a little bit but you know we, we can do that either way at, at the section between the first driveway and, and Campbell Station uh, no more on that okay want to move on to want to go to the, the next road more challenging one potentially sure. <laughs> Campbell Lakes Drive on the north side of their property um, there you have the uh, that's the sidewalk that is coming from Hampton Inn that was built when Hampton Inn was constructed um, and then you got the dialysis property and that's that building to the left of the, on the image then you got the rest of Campbell Lakes Drive and as you go west on Campbell Lakes Drive like we're doing in this image well, signs of course um, <laughs> uh, but anyway you start getting into some physical constraints partly caused by the nonconformity of the existing parking lot um, and then uh, you get into some severe topographic conditions as you go toward Campbell Station Road uh, you got some large, albeit Bradford pear trees, but they are appear to be in pretty decent shape for Bradford pears. But more importantly, the slope there, if you haven't been out there, you probably got about four to five feet of grade difference between the curb of Campbell Lakes Drive and the curb of the parking lot. Um, and really to put in a facility there, and which it also kind of narrows as you go east, the curbs kind of narrow a little bit come more together um, I mean it would be at this point it would be a real significant uh, 
you know, undertaking that um, would really involve a, a regrading of the entire site probably, certainly a major retaining wall at a minimum. Um, so there's topographic reasons that the applicant is noted for not putting a pedestrian facility in this environment at this time. So what um, the staff has tried to do is we went out and kind of walked this property and looked at the Hampton Inn sidewalk and, you know, is there any other kind of creative way to get a pedestrian facility down to Station West somehow at some point? Because it is kind of like Station West, there's a lot of value in having a pedestrian facility here. You've got two large restaurants um, and then you got three large hotels uh, that are to the east and north uh, of this sidewalk essentially. So it really does have a lot of value in being extended to Station West and ultimately somehow to Campbell Station Road because um, it would benefit Station West as well. People wouldn't have to get in their car if they're staying at Staybridge uh, and drive down to you know the the restaurant that's going to be in the new building in Station West. They could you know get get out and have a nice little summer stroll down down the sidewalk. Um, from a staff's perspective, I think the 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 best way topographically and you know simplistically to get this facility extended, I think would would have to happen when the remainder of the Station West um, site is redeveloped, um, which I can't imagine that wouldn't happen at some point in the near future because you've got a nice looking building that <coughs> is adjacent to a, a very dated building and, and portion of the parking lot. Um, this is much more topographically um, favorable. Uh, in this area, we'd have to work with that property owner um, of the dialysis uh, center, uh, but trying to extend that somehow maybe up on, you know, the bank there essentially and get it over to the parking lot of Station West, the, it would probably be the northeastern portion of the parking lot. And then from that point, you get some kind of pedestrian facility um, to the entrance points of the Station West development as part of the redevelopment of that eastern building uh, would seem to make more sense. So we would support a variance to not construct a pedestrian facility along Campbell Lakes Drive at this time, uh, but with a condition recommended as part of this action taken um, that if there is a variance granted that, um, you know, we don't preclude uh, a pedestrian facility from happening in the future and we would want that to be tied to any future redevelopment of the eastern building and the eastern portion of Station West so that that's something that will will happen you know when that redevelopment occurs um, so that's kind of an overview of that particular environment and the staff's recommendation uh, and then we would tie that to the site plan that gets ultimately approved and make sure that they actually show that potential future connection as part of their site plan. So it's reflected on this is generally the idea of what we're, what we're, what our vision is on getting a pedestrian facility, you know, along this, this section of Campbell Lakes Drive. <coughs> Yeah, it don't look like there's any sort of a, I mean, there's a sidewalk in front of the Hampton Inn and then that little stub right there that you're looking at it to picture. And there's really no crosswalk to go over to the uh, the two restaurants over on the uh, north side of uh, Campbell Lakes. Uh, yeah, we looked at that too. And we looked at maybe doing something on the across the Campbell, the um, Cracker Barrel frontage, because it is flatter over there. Right, but it's still it's a little disconnected uh, from what we're trying to accomplish on the uh, south side of Campbell Lakes Drive. Okay.
So is the action taken by the Planning Commission uh, contingent upon approval of the variance? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Well, it looks like the uh, what you have tied from what you're suggesting, it will tie the, the uh, uh, the back building, which is also non-conforming. Yes, it is. Uh, and that portion of the parking lot is too. Obviously. It's also non-conforming, yeah. The dumpster for, that I showed in the earlier picture would be something that they would need to bring into compliance. Um, that might be going in the wrong direction here. Um, <clears throat> when they redevelop that eastern portion too, um, that, that area there. Mm -hmm. That dumpster enclosure is obviously, it's probably in partly in the right of way, frankly. Um, and uh, so it actually has to meet a 20 foot setback from the front. So when they redevelop that, that whole portion of the parking lot really will need to be revisited. And it just, the land lays a lot better to bring a facility up to that portion of the parking lot uh, and then get it to the building. Um, you know, from that point, um, as far as getting it from there down to Campbell Station Road, um, you know, I don't know that they'll be connected to Station West, which then they could get, they could go down to Station West Drive uh, to get to Campbell Station Road. Um, there may be some other ways that I haven't thought of or uh, to get um, Station West connected to Campbell Station Road sidewalk. Uh, but you just got a lot of real severe topographic issues across across that frontage. Okay, just out of curiosity, where would you put the dumpster? Well, that'd be part of what they'd have to figure out. I mean, you know, we'd have to figure out where that okay. needs to go. Uh, like I say, when they redevelop the eastern building, uh, it may be a smaller footprint building as well, um, and that could free up some space. They probably want to put it somewhere where it's not as visible either. Um, usually you don't want to put your dumpster uh, right out there in front of your building. Uh, so you'd probably want to redesign that and make sure that you tuck it in somewhere where it's less visible. And... I mean, we would love for them to redo the dumpster now as part of this project, uh, but uh, we haven't, you know, that wasn't a condition that was part of the site plan uh, okay. that the Planning Commission, you know, approved conditionally. We'll be on the next one. Definitely would be if they redevelop anything in this eastern portion of the site. So, Mr. Shipley, if I understand, then, the applicant is proposing a sidewalk section along Station West Drive from the existing sidewalk along North Campbell Station Road to the western access point in the development from Camp, or Station West Drive. So, basically, they said to that first road, that first opening, and then beyond that point, they were proposing some restriping of Station West Drive for pro pedestrian provisions. Mm -hmm. But did I understand you to say that we could require that subject to the town granting the additional space that it be curbed and actually built up or were you proposing that it be just what they said which is just striping on well we were road? proposing it would be a safer pedestrian environment if they actually reduced the width of the street given its context and and then put the new facility right behind the the new curb line all right would that involve raising that above the street level then? Um, I mean, would it be a, a few inches no, of the concrete really. or would it be level with the It would the probably street? be roughly level. You'd have to have drainage off of the sidewalk, but yeah, it shouldn't be. I wouldn't imagine it would be raised much because you wouldn't want it to be, um, you know, something that somebody could, you know, fall Trip off of yeah. or whatever, you know. Sure, but it wouldn't just be restriping of the existing right. roadbed. But no. you'd, you'd actually have another extruded curb there, correct? Yeah. You okay. Yeah. 
And to clarify, you would not be constructing any sort of sidewalk at this time on Campbell Lakes, correct? That would just be <coughs> subject to the further improvement of the property. Further redevelopment of Station okay. West, yes. That's what that's what we would recommend at this point. No more questions from me. All right. Does anyone have any questions from the applicant, or would the applicant like to talk at all about uh, item number three on the agenda? I think you all have pretty much covered that one as well. I just want to clarify, Mark, what you're looking at as a condition would be we would provide in the future a sidewalk along Campbell Station, Campbell Lakes, uh, on the property, along the property yeah, to the east. Hampton Inn, and we'd have to work with the property owner with the dialysis. Okay. Some of it could be in the right of way, maybe all of it, potentially. Okay, and then, so then that would tie property. into the property somewhere, or yeah. would it need to be, okay. So we wouldn't, I'm just concerned about that cell tower and. No, you'd be coming in to the south of that. You'd be coming interior. That's okay. kind of what we were looking at. Okay. So you try to avoid all that mess. Now the dumpster thing does need to be brought into compliance, right. obviously, when when that happens. But so we'd be tying back further into the parking lot yes. somewhere. Okay, okay. That's something I would recommend that you do need to show and reflect somehow on this site plan <coughs> so that it's memorialized, kind of as part of this approval. That's you know before the. The, uh, town at this point though we won't know the specifics obviously because we don't know how it's going to be redeveloped uh, but we I think we need to have that somehow in writing on part of the approved plans that this is the the vision of what we're going to do with pedestrian facilities yeah I agree All right, does anyone have any further questions? All right, then going back to item number two on the agenda, do I have any motion with regard to item number two? Uh, motion to approve. Uh, do you want me to read it? To the extent of your full motion, yes. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the... Uh, Request for special exception. It's, well, I can't say that. <laughs> I guess uh, let's try this again. Motion to approve a request for a special exception of a non-conforming structure as provided for Chapter 4, Section 22A2 of the Fair Zone Ordinance associated with the redevelopment of a portion of Station West Development 11311 Station West Drive, zoned C2. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Uh, I think we need to clarify. He said 22 and it's 17. Didn't he say 22? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the next one down is 22. It's section 17, correction. I have a motion, I have a second. Do I have any discussion? So my understanding is we're just approving a special acceptance for non-conforming use. As, as the motion was made, there's no expansion. I just want to make sure I understand the motion correctly. Well, I can't really say that it, with the motion that it is expansion. Correct. And I just question 
You could say because it's not an expansion, it's a contraction, that that's why you would recommend approval of, of it in this case, because it clearly is in compliance with the language of the ordinance, to me, if that's the way you want to phrase it. I guess uh, I'll start by saying I'm in favor of them doing what they're doing. <laughs> uh, my concern is, like your concern, is that I'm not sure that we have authority if it doesn't meet that. Correct. And what I'd hate to see is people think that they have to come to this board to get authority to do something that they don't need our authority to do. So anytime they come to the town and have a non-conforming structure and they want to improve it, not expand it, and lessen it, no one needs to ask me to do that. Uh, we'll probably need an amendment then. Right? And so that that's fine. That's th good guidance. That's from, from <laughs> that's. I mean, that's just kind of my general we, thinking. We is were that struggling with how to deal with this too? So, and I would just say to that, this, I think this is one of those cases that we may need to send a recommendation back to the Planning Commission and Board of Mayor of Alderman to look at the ordinance to address this issue of when you're not expanding. I mean, I just don't see under the ordinance as it's written, you know, I, I agree with with you that I fully agree with what they want to do. I just don't see that under the ordinance as it's written that we have any authority to approve or deny. I, I would lean back to what section of the ordinance are we going to justify our decision by when, when we're really not talking about an expansion and that was made clear by the town. Um, and that's, I also wanted to make sure that this was in no way punitive to the applicant with the planning commission, the board mayor and alderman, or whoever would need to approve their site plan, the planning commission. Uh, planning commission. You know, th that this is not going to hold them up at the planning commission. They're going to have to wait on an ordinance to be written for this. Um, I just, personally, I just don't see how we vote on something that, that to me, I, I don't see the appearance of authority to do so. Um, although I do agree with, you know, the redevelopment, I, don't, I think it's it's a much improvement. I just don't think that they need our permission to do that under the current ordinance. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, in that case, I can withdraw. Okay. You want to make a, a motion to that effect? What you just said. Sure, I'll, I'll make a motion that. Well, do I need to make a, a motion for this board not to take action? Well, you can make a motion to that regard and then suggest that the town revisit okay. how we deal with expansions okay. of, or how we deal Jackson's with redevelopments, redevelopments as they might apply okay. to a non uh, I'll first withdraw my motion. All right. Motion withdrawn. Do I have a new motion? Sure. I'll, I will make a motion that this board take no action on item one of the agenda. Item two. Oh, I'm sorry. Item two of the agenda. Um, in that the uh, the town reconsider or consider how we deal with redevelopment of non-conforming structures when uh, they do not expand on the property, either they contract or remain the same, uh, and consider language for the ordinance uh, for this board to follow in the future. Do I have a second? A second. All right. Uh, any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Motion carries. Moving on to item three on the agenda with regard to the variance request to not construct pedestrian facilities. Do I have a motion? But isn't that confusing because aren't they constructing the sidewalks? You can tie it to the staff's recommendation if you want, if you're more comfortable with that. Yes, I think that would be a better way to do it. And you would need to note the reasons, too, for that, if you do, which are noted by the staff. I 
25 pages. <laughs> okay. It's on Camel Lakes. You want me to do it? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, I will do a motion to re request a request for a variance from Chapter 4, Section 22A and B uh, to <coughs> abide by staff's recommendation on building the sidewalks along Station West Drive with the conditions by staff on the redevelopment of the eastern portion of the property. Is that good, Mark? On both of the streets? Yeah. Just if yes. you wanted to go with the recommendations for the reasons noted. By yes, the on Campbell Lakes. Topography and, yeah, uh, so that you do put that in the record. Yep, yeah, that's be fine. Those reasons. Graphic. Oh, yeah. Given the uh, topographic conditions and grade change along it, uh, the frontage of Campbell Lakes Drive. What is that other road? I don't even. Yeah, I you may. I don't know if you want to talk about this kind of based on the plan that is pre presented to the Planning Commission, and then to specifically note on the plan the the vision for getting a pedestrian facility along. Campbell Lakes Drive at some when that part in the east is redeveloped, but that is talked about in the staff's recommendation. So that's something that um, you know probably would be covered if if you just go by the staff recommendations. But I do think as part of the staff recommendations that that how we're dealing with pedestrian facilities on Campbell Lakes Drive since they they are kind of developing facilities on Station West Drive, so they're not really requesting to not put them on Station West Drive. But for now, they're not proposing any facilities along Campbell Lakes Drive. Uh, but there is a plan <coughs> that's recommended by the staff that could get a facility along Campbell Lakes Drive and get it into the Station West development hmm. at some future date. So, so we'll call that the eastern portion? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the board would place a condition on any on this variance approval that would require a, uh, the uh, mm, connection during the redevelopment of the eastern portion of Station West. And since it, since it's sidewalk and dumpster and uh, beat the whole side. I mean, that area it had to be brought. Yeah. For any compliance. And a parking lot. Yeah. So. Okay. I think I got it. Do I have a second? I'll second. Uh, do we have any discussion? I guess I have a question in, in your motion with regard to uh, adopting staff's recommendation for a walkway on Station West. Um, in your motion, are you uh, making it contingent upon uh, the applicant seeking the town's approval to expand the sidewalk 
beyond the first entrance into the existing roadbed so that a new curb can be installed and that uh, a better sidewalk up Station West? Uh, true sidewalk and not just striping. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. That's what the staff is recommending, so yeah. It's just make, making sure we all are on the same page with that. Okay. okay. Um, any other questions? All right. Call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Good luck. Sounds like a good project. Mm -hmm. Thank you.